Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're gonna solve filter, all right? So filter is a problem of CS50. If you wanna get the solution of this problem and other programming problems, check the description below. All right, so filter is basically a project that we have to implement some filters in the images, all right? And once we implement the, the filter, we're gonna render an image with this filter. For example, we have here grayscale, sepia, reflect, and blur. All right, so we're gonna start the, the code understanding what we have to do, okay? So let's start with this. So I'm gonna start explaining the code, uh, showing you what, how we're gonna manipulate the images, all right, what is the structure, and also the things that we have in the code so far, because if you take a look in here, we have a folder with name images, where we have four images in here. We're gonna convert these images in the filter that we want. We have bmp.h, filter.c, helpers.c, helpers.h, and make file. And we're gonna understand what we have to do in here. Okay, so let's understand by seeing this animation. As CS50 explains in the walkthrough videos, every image is just a sequence of individual pixels arranged into a particular grid. A pixel can be represented as three values, which we might call channels, red channel, green channel, and blue channel. We normally talk about them as RGB. The values for red, green, and blue start at zero, meaning none, until 255, meaning the maximum. For example, if we set the blue value to a small value, you will see that we have a little bit of blue in the pixel. A higher blue value means more blue in the pixel, and 255 means we have as much blue as we possibly can in this particular pixel. We set it back to zero and the pixel goes back to black. We can use as many blue, red, and green channels as we want to control how many of these colors we want in the pixel. We don't need to just use one of the channels at a time. We can use it in a combination to create any numbers of different colors. If we take enough pixels and set them to the right color value and arrange them in the appropriate order, the result is that we can see an image that looks like something. All this explanation is already implemented in your code. If we take a look at bmp.h file, we can see here that CS50 already defined a struct for us. The struct has name RGB triple, where this RGB triple represents a pixel. And again, what a pixel is made is made by three properties, green, blue, and red. And we can see these three properties in here. All right, so we're gonna use this struct RGB triple to access the blue, green, and red channels. So basically, our task here will be implement the filters of grayscale, sepia, reflect, and blur, all right? We're gonna implement everything in helpers.c, all right? We have here all the, the things. So we can take a look here at helpers.h, how they are called, all right, the functions. So if you take a look, all the functions, they have three arguments, all right? So we're gonna receive the height, width, and the image. And the image will be type of our RGB triple struct because an image is made by pixels. So our image is a two-dimensional array that is made by pixels, all right? So image zero, we represent the first row of that image. Image one, we represent the second row, and so on and so forth. The last row of your image will be image height minus one. To get a particular pixel in that image, you're going to use both width and height. For example, the first pixel in the first row will have an index image zero, zero. The same will happen to the last pixel in the last row, in which the index will be image height minus one with minus one. We can use this notation to access any pixel in the image. Since every pixel is represented by the struct RGB triple, we can access the red, blue, and green values using the dot notation. For example, if we want to set the first pixel in the first row to red value zero, we can do image zero zero dot RGBT red equals to zero. So in grayscale, we have to, we're gonna receive an image, all right, the original image, that will be this one that you're seeing the screen, and we have to turn it into a grayscale filter. What is this? It's a black and white image, all right? So how can we do this? Our task for grayscale is to make sure that the red, green, and blue values are all the same. However, to be the same, we have to calculate the average pixel value for any of these individual channels and use that as the new value for red, green, and blue. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? We have to loop through every 
pixel we have in the image so we're gonna do a loop through the rows and the columns of the image to get every particular pixel and in each particular pixel we have to calculate the average uh, between the properties red green and blue all right then with this uh, average value we're gonna set the previous value for red green and blue to this new average value okay so how can we do this let's take a look so like i said we're gonna do a loop so we're gonna do a loop through the rows so we're gonna start row equals to zero row less than so what is the maximum value for row is the number of height all right because the row it's this part so here we're gonna use height and we're gonna do row plus plus then the, we're gonna do another for loop to loop through the uh, the columns so here we're gonna do column equals to zero column less than and here the column is the maximum value for column is width so we're gonna do width and then column plus plus okay then what we're gonna do in here like I said we have to calculate the average between the three colors that we have in a pixel so to do this we're gonna create a variable called RGB gray for example okay and since it's an integer we're gonna use a round function and what is round round we have to include this line here math.h okay because it's a function from this library and what we're gonna round in here we're gonna get each property of the pixel so to access the pixel we're gonna use image that is the name of the, our image in the position row that is our interactive variable in the position uh, column sorry and to access the property we're gonna use the dot notation so here if we take a look at the struct uh, we have we're gonna use the RGBT blue RGBT green and RGBT red so here we're gonna use RGBT blue plus image in position row in position column dot RGBT green plus image on position row on position column dot RGBT red okay and after this we have to divide by 3.0 and why we're gonna do a round here because this can return us a, a float number so when we do a round we're gonna return an integer value all right it's going to round for the first integer value that we can use let's not forget to put a semicolon after this line I always forget so now that we have the average value for the colors we're gonna set the new colors to be this average all right so again we have to access image row column and oops column let me close and to access the property for blue we're gonna use rgbt blue and we're gonna set this equals to rgb gray all right and we're gonna do this for the other two colors so we did this for blue we're gonna do this for green and then we're gonna do this for red all right red perfect so this is what we need for our grayscale let's check so for example here it's our regular image once I run here so make filter let's see if we have no bugs great to run this file we have to use this dot forward slash filter dash g g for gray we have then to put the images and the image we want to change in this car in this case er.bmp and then what will be the name of the new file output.bmp so once I run this code we have here a new file out.bmp and once I open it we're gonna see the image and it's all in grayscale so for the first filter we are all done okay now let's do the sepia so now let's do sepia so basically in sepia we're gonna receive again the original image and we're gonna convert it to sepia all right sepia it's kind of a brownish image okay so we're gonna do something like what we're seeing right now in the screen so to implement sepia we're going to take each pixel and convert it to its sepia equivalent 
we're going to find the CP equivalent using the formula given CS50 requirements. Each red, green and blue values will be calculated in different ways. So like we can see here in the screen right now, this is the formula. These are the formulas we're gonna get, use to get each value for red, green and blue, all right? So it's going to be basically the same as we did for grayscale, but instead of getting the average, we're gonna calculate this way, okay? So let's see how we're gonna do this. So to do CP is the same thing as we did in grayscale. So let's start looping through every pixel in our image, all right? So again, for int row equals to zero, row less than height and row plus plus then we're gonna initialize our for loop for the columns so in column equals to zero column less than width and column plus plus okay and now we're not gonna calculate the average we're gonna calculate the sepia red okay so we're gonna use this formula here okay again we have to round all right so int sepia red will be this round and then we're gonna get the blah 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 instead of original red what are we going to use we're gonna use the image on position row on position column all right dot rgbt red okay and we're gonna use this instead of original green original red original blue here it's green so we're gonna change to green green and in here we're gonna change to blue all right so here it's blue then remember to close and use the semicolon all right then we're gonna do this for the other functions as well okay so we can kind of copy what we did and just change the values. So here, control C, control V, control V. So let's change for each part. So if I do here sepia, what is the name? Sepia green, here it's 0 0.349, here it's 686 six. and in here we have 168 and for the other one here we have 131 here we have 534 and the last here it's 272 and here it's sepia blue all right great then we're gonna set what will be the new value for the image in each property but in here we have to be aware of something do you remember the beginning of the video where i explained that we can't have a number for the channels greater than 255 so here we're gonna do we're gonna find the minimum value between what we got from the cpu red and 255 if the number of, of CPR red is greater than, the, than 255, we're going to use 255. If CPR, red, if CPR red is less than 255, we're going to use the number of CPR red, all right? So to do this, we're going to use a function that has name find min, f min, all right, where we're going to set which is the value in here. So let's do the following. We're going to set the new value for the, the position row in position column for example for dot rgb t red will be equals to f min all right so f min will find the minimum value between 255 and the sepia red okay and we're gonna do the same for the other ones to set so i'm gonna copy and paste twice and just do the changes so in here we're gonna use sepia green and here sepia green and in the last one we're gonna change to blue blue and blue okay this is the implementation now if we make filter we had no problem great now let's run instead of dash g we're gonna use dash s because it's for sepia so like again this is our original image once we run our code this will be the output so if we take a look at the output it is sepia so we're done with this filter all right let's do reflect 
So now let's do reflection. So basically in this, in this filter, we're gonna receive the original image and we're gonna convert it into a reflection. What this means, we're gonna make like a mirror, a mirror image, all right? So what is in the left will be in the right and so on and so forth, okay? So let's understand how this will work. We're going to do that remembering that each image is just a two-dimensional array where we have rows and every row has an individual pixel inside of that row. When we take the mirror image, what really happens is that the row stays in the same order, but the pixels in the row switch places. For example, row 0 is still at the top, but it's being reflected, so on and so forth. In each row, we're going to take each individual pixel and reflect them. So the pixel that was originally on the far left of the row is now on the far right. So let's implement the reflect filter, right? Now that we understand everything we have to do. So basically we're gonna loop through every pixel that we have in our image and we're gonna switch places between the rows. So for example, the first pixel we're gonna switch place with the last, the second one we're gonna switch place with the second to last and so on and so forth, all right? So to do this, we're gonna create a temporary variable to store uh, and this temporary variable will be the type of a pixel, so RGB triple, and I'm going to call temp, okay? We're going to do a for loop to loop through every pixel in our image, row less than height, and row plus plus. Okay, then we're going to do another loop into column, equals to zero, column less than width,